Yep, I do. I have more printouts. Brian probably needs them too. Okay, so we're working number eight. Nick, did you get one? Yeah, I just got one. Okay. Okay, surveyors use the total stations set on control point RH1 to observe a zenith angle to the top of the building of 75 degrees. So let's just start drawing our picture. Okay? And like you just just start sketching. It doesn't matter if you get it right, it doesn't have to be the scale. Okay, so here's our control point RH1. Okay, and we got a total station set on it. Okay. And then we over somewhere over here we got a building. Okay? And we measure a zenith angle. Okay, does anybody know what a zenith angle is? From the top, from the zenith. By the way, that's the type of vertical angle angles total stations actually measure. If you see a vertical, what we call a vertical angle, the total station has converted that for you. So let me just explain the difference real quick. Okay, that's pointing straight up. That's the plumb line. Okay, does everybody understand why the total station uses a plumb line to measure vertical? Because that's what the total that's what you do with the total station. You level well, as soon as you level it, it knows the only thing it basically knows is which way is straight up. That's it. That's all it knows until you tell it otherwise. Okay, so a, a zenith angle is measured from the plumb line down. Okay, this is a zenith angle. Okay. But that's not typically what surveyors like to have on the screen. Okay, and it's also usually not what's recorded in our raw data. What's usually recorded in our raw data is this other angle right here. This is called the vertical angle. It's measured from 90. It's measured from, so plumb line is up, the level plane is across, okay? So zenith angle is measured from the plumb line, from the plumb line, from plumb line. Okay, vertical angles are measured from the level plane. Vertical from the level plane. Now, here's what's important with vertical angles. With vertical angles, you got to know the sign. You got to know is it measured up from plumb or down from? I mean, sorry, up from the level plane or down from the level plane? With the zenith angle, you don't have to worry about that. They're all measured from the same direction. Okay. All right. So what I would do as soon as I see zenith angle, I would just go up. Oh, let me draw a little dashed line here so I don't screw that up. Okay. Now I told you 75 degrees. So uh, you know you don't have to be perfect. Just get it rough. All right. So we go. All right. There's our 75 degree angle. Okay, that's our first zenith. Okay, we'll take a picture of this for you guys too. Okay, now let's keep reading the problem. Now, some you gotta be careful because sometimes in these problems, if they wanna screw with you, they will put in extra information that you don't need. That's okay, sketch it. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Okay, I did not do that in this problem. Everything in this problem you need. She, she you notice I put that in there for you, Elena? Lady surveyor. She's observed a zenith angle of 92 degrees to the bottom of the building from the same setup. Okay, so then she measures another zenith angle. This one's 92 degrees. Okay, now if it helps you, I'm gonna have marker fingers by the end of the hour. Okay, if it helps you, you can just draw another little dashed line so you understand where the level plane is. Okay, 92 degrees. <clears throat> okay. The control point occupied by the station is 46 feet horizontally from the face of the building. Okay, now, so you could come down here and draw it down here. Okay, so this is, what did I say, 46 or 86? 46. 46 feet. Okay. Okay, but I'm all, just to make it easier for me, I'm going to say, hey, if it's 46 feet here, what is it here? Okay, everybody see that? This is horizontal distance, the same distance up here, right? Okay, 46 feet. All right, guess what? We're setting ourselves up for a right triangle trig problem here. Okay, so does everybody understand to figure out the height of the building, we gotta solve two right triangles. We gotta solve this right triangle, and we gotta solve this right triangle. That's gonna give us distance x, and distance, we'll call it x2 and x1. Does everybody see the height of the building is x1? Okay, so this is why algebra becomes important, right? So if y is the height of the building, y equals x1 plus x2, okay? But we gotta figure out what x1 and x2 are, right? Okay, now, it's a little bit trickier because we don't know these two angles yet. We need these interior angles. We don't have them yet, we gotta calculate them. 
That's exactly people that write text, test questions. This is exactly what they want to do, right? They, they want to like. That's why word they. That's why test takers, test question writers like word problems, right? They want to like. You could know right triangle trig if you don't know surveying. Are you going to solve this problem? No. no. That's why they like it. Okay, so what we really need to know is what is this angle and what is this angle? We need those two little angles for our right triangle trig problem, right? So we need A1 and A2. Okay? All right, so the first angle is 75. So then to figure out A1, A1, so A1, this is why algebra is important, equals, what's this, what's this angle here? 90. So A1 is 90 degrees minus 75 degrees. Does everybody see that? 90 minus this gives us what's left over. That's what we're looking for, right? Nod your head if you think you understand. Yep. All right. So what's the angle A1? 15. A1 is 15 degrees. Okay. Okay. Now we need A2. Okay. Now A2 is a little easier. Here's the bottom 90. Right? We know we're two, de two degrees past plumb. So what's the angle A2? 92. Nope. Two. Two sure. degrees. We look for oh, this little angle here. Below the left. Right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So what we just did right there is we just converted zenith angles to vertical angles. That's something a surveyor should know how to do. Okay? All right, so now we have two right triangle trig problems. Okay, and I know we haven't gone through the trig, so I'm just going to walk you through this. Okay? Actually, I'm not. We're gonna. I'm not gonna give you the answer. But here's what you do. So you're gonna take. We're gonna go over the trig ratio. But so what we have here is this is this side right here. We have this side in relation to the angle A1. This is the opposite side. Okay. And here's how I remember which side is it opposite or adjacent. I just pretend I'm sitting at the apex of the triangle and I've got a gun and I shoot to the midpoint of the arc. And whatever side my bullet hits, that's the opposite side. I even make the little pew noise that helps me. All right, so there you go. That's the opposite side. Okay, this side, the longest side of the triangle is always the hypotenuse. Okay. If you can shoot your gun, your imaginary ray gun, and hit the opposite side, there's only one side left. What is it? Adjacent. adjacent. Okay, so then you just got to remember, if we've got opposite and adjacent, so that's sine, right? So we're going to use the sine trig function with 15 degrees and the distance of 46 feet to solve for x1. We're not going to do it right now, but you guys can do it later. Opposite okay. over adjacent? That's Isn't that tangent? Is that toa? That's, that's tangent. tangent, sorry. Yeah. yeah, sorry, tangent. Okay, so same thing here. What side is this for this little angle? Opposite. That's the opposite. Okay, and then we have the adjacent because this is the hypotenuse. So we're going to use tangent on that, hypotenuse, okay? You solve the two right triangle trig problems, add up x1 and x2, and you have the height of the building. Is that one not cosine? Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Do we have, so, do we have this, do we do we know this distance? Did no, I give you? No. no, so it's tangent. They're both tangent. Okay, so that's how you solve that one. Okay. That takes longer than 30 seconds, doesn't it? And you got to think, yeah. Could you could you solve that without a sketch? I don't know. You could, but it'd be hard to keep track of all that. And if you're like me and you're dyslexic, you're going to flip something and get it wrong. So drop, drop the picture. Could we, I know you said we're not going to run through the trick, but right. I just did tan of 15 is equal to x over 46. That's yeah. not a negative number. And you got a negative, okay, yeah, you screwed something up. So I'm, I'm, Yep. You you didn't push the buttons on your calculator, right? The tangent of a of an, a positive angle is a positive number. Yeah, yeah. It's because you're using a ti. That's probably what it is. Huh. Okay. All right. So just hold on because we're going to do some trig in a minute, and you can test your buttons. Okay. So let's look at question number nine. Last time I touched the calculator. Oh, <laughs> it was me, like you guys got to remind me to take pictures of this. I gotta okay? find it. All right, are there any questions on that? You guys work it, and then if you have questions, you can come and get me, work it later this week. 